last Sunday of the church year. Next week we begin Advent. Um, you have something first, and then I will the prayer concern. You should have received either uh, in your bulletin or uh, on the side a, a plain white half sheet that has a heading that says something like, we need your help, and then some numbers. We're doing something a little differently this year for um, nominations and looking for leaders for this congregation. We're going to try a process that has been successful in a number of other congregations. We're essentially going to ask you to be our eyes and ears and, and help, us, um, help us find persons who might be um, good leaders for this congregation, people who um, have the gifts that it takes to be a part of the leadership team of our saviors. And so that sheet of paper has the place to put a name or names of people as you look around the congregation who you think would be good leaders. And what we would do then is we'll follow up on that and use that kind of as our basis for beginning to, um, to secure people who are willing to be a part of the ministry of this congregation, uh, through the, particularly through the congregation council. A couple things about that. First of all, you can put your own name down. That's fine. Um, number two, you do not put your name on the sheet in terms of your submitting it, okay? Well, you, you don't have to put your name on it in that sense. So if you put your own name on it, we won't know when to put that down. The only thing I do tell you is if you're not, since you're not putting your name on the sheet, so we don't know who submitted a sheet of paper, please make sure that you write legibly because we won't be able to come back to you and say, what is that? You know? So please write, write any name or names uh, carefully. We ask you to do this carefully and prayerfully. We'll do it this week and again next week. Um, if you have some ideas of people who you think would be good leaders and you can jot them down, you can put it in the offering plate, you can leave it at the usher stand, you can give it to us in the office. Um, again, we're going to do this again next week as well. So if you want to take some time to think about it, pray about it, uh, please feel free to do that. Uh, we're just, just trying to collect some names and, and, and ask you to, again, be our, kind of our eyes and ears because you may have... You know, you might look at somebody that you see in, in worship or who you've worked with in, in the context of our ministries and say, well, that person, they, just, they have got great gifts. They, they, they really be good in terms of, of the leadership role. Uh, this is your chance to lift those people up for us because you may see some people that, that we don't necessarily um, recognize and, and don't, don't see that. Uh, we, we, we need you to help us with that. So please give that some thought and prayer and uh, if a name or name name or names pop up. Uh, please share that with us again this week or next week. Just remember as we're transitioning um, the pew pads, we need you to fill that out during the offering, not the sermon, so just make sure we do that. Um, and then prayer concerns as we head into our week. Um, we want to keep those who've been hospitalized. Noah Campbell um, was hospitalized on Thursday, Thanksgiving. Um, he was our young Confirmation student who had appendicitis problems a month or so ago, and um, it finally, instead of waiting until December for the surgery, the appendix decided it was time to come out now. <coughs> so, happy Thanksgiving, Noah. He had his appendix out. Um, so, he sh should be home now and, and doing well. Um, we also want to keep Lisa Webb in our prayers. She was hospitalized. And then, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, we want to continue to keep Jackie Hartman's family in our prayers. Jackie's funeral was here yesterday. The flowers behind me um, on the altar are from her funeral yesterday. And then we want to keep Tracy Helgeson and her family in our prayers on the death of her father, George, on Friday. So we'll keep those families in our prayers as they grieve the loss of life. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts. So we will begin for sure. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and 
given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live to serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The opening hymn is number 855.
grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
you ever like maybe read a book or saw a television show or a movie with a king? No, no, in the carnival. Yeah, oh, the carnival. You saw a king in a carnival? Okay. What, what, is, what does a king look like? Oh, they can be demanding. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, like this, like this. Let's pretend this is my throne and I am the king. Now I get to be very demanding, don't I? Right? I could do that? Is that what a king does? The boss! Yeah, the king is the boss, right? The king said, yes! The king is the boss. And what else? What does the king wear? The king wear jewels and all fancy clothes. Yeah? And does the king get everything that the king wants? Yes, you bet. I get what I want. When I make out my birthday list, you better deliver. I want everything I want for my birthday because I am the king. Right? Yeah, that's kind of what kings do, don't they? But is that what Jesus does? Yeah. No, Jesus, Jesus is a different kind of king. I'm going to read a story in just a few moments, or part of a story. And this time, Jesus is the king, but Jesus is a very different king. He doesn't have a throne. What does Jesus have? What is Jesus, what is he on? He's not on the throne, he's on the, the cross. And Jesus doesn't have a crown with gold and jewels. His crown is a crown of thorns, and the thorns are sharp. Like that. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, and, and you know what the best part is? Jesus doesn't say, gimme, gimme, gimme. Jesus says, I want to give you my love. Yeah, he does. And I want to take care of you. And I want to hold you. And when you're scared, I want to be with you. That's a very different kind of king, isn't it? Yeah, a very different kind of king. But that, and that's why we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, because Jesus is very different. He's a very different kind of king. So I want you to remember that this week, okay? Remember, as you think about, you know, we go out in the world, you go to school, or you go home, or you play with your friends, or with your brothers and sisters. And remember, most of all, that Jesus is the kind of king who wants to give you his love all the time, okay? Don't forget that. All right. Do you guys go back to your seats? And as they go back to their seats, we're going to invite the congregation to stand and join in the gospel acclamation. Shopping, I bought a haircut. That's all I got. 
Um, I did stroll through Walmart for a few minutes. I was kind of thought that the parking lot was a little less chaotic than I imagined, and there's a spot like four, four spots from the door. And then I made the mistake of going over to Best Buy, just for the heck of it. Best Buy was mobbed, and the parking lot for Hobby Lobby, Coles, and Target was all locked in, too. That, was, that must have been the happening place, I guess. I didn't buy anything. Kind of looked around, a little people watching. Um, but, but, and part of the reason I didn't have to do any Black Friday shopping was, did you notice this year, Black Friday deals were available on Tuesday? I mean, I, I did. I, 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 I bought something for my daughter. She's not here right now, don't tell her. But I bought something for her. I didn't have to buy it on, on Black Friday. I got it on Tuesday for the same price as Black Friday. They've started to move Black Friday earlier in the week, which is kind of a curious thing. Not curious, I guess, it's just an interesting thing that um, Black Friday is now the whole week instead of just a day. Um, and of course, now tomorrow's Cyber Monday. You're excited about Cyber Monday. We'll buy some more stuff, spend some more money. Because it is the season, isn't it? We're getting into that season of, of spending the money and ho, 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 and all that kind of, kind of fun stuff. Um, but it does make one wonder, and we go through this every year, makes one wonder, where is the meaning in the season? Have we lost the meaning of the season in the midst of our consumerism and, and, the, and, the, and our secularism kind of taking over um, our, our areas that once were reserved for the faith journey, for being faithful. Now, if you're thinking that this is particularly in, uh, uh, troubling, I suppose it is, did anybody here, now this is going to be kind of a recent, I'm, I'm, I'm being kind of relative terms here, anybody here recently a religious leader, a prominent religious leader, bemoaned the fact that the world is losing the spiritual element and secularism is taking over? Anybody notice that? Anybody it was the Pope. Pope Pius XI, in 1925, in 1925 said, we're losing the spiritual to the secular. So for any of you who think that the good old days, 20 years ago, this didn't happen, you've got to go back 120 years at least. Because 90 years ago, the Pope said, we're losing the spiritual. And so Pius XI came up with an idea. His idea was to create a festival called Christ the King. And originally it was in late October, I think it was competing with the Reformation or something, and now it has been moved to the end of November. Christ the King Sunday. And what it does is, it, in the context of our church calendar, uh, we have a calendar, you know, the, this, the, the, world, the world has a calendar that starts January 1st, and December 31st. The church has a calendar. It begins with the first Sunday of Advent, which is next Sunday, and it swings around to the last Sunday of the year, which is Christ the King Sunday. It was Christ the King Sunday was placed at the, end, at the end of the church year, kind of with that idea that as we think of the cycle of life, that we talk about in the fullness of time, Christ the King will return, you know, the second coming of Jesus. And so we put it at the end of the year to kind of be looking ahead, sort of that figurative looking ahead. Um, to, to that coming of Christ. So we have this Christ the King Sunday that is placed here at the end of the church year. A time to reflect on what it means for Jesus Christ to be the king of our lives instead of other stuff becoming king. The text this morning has been chosen to fit with that theme. And so here's the story. The, the little snip story that I read was a portion of about a two-chapter sequence in the Gospel of John where Jesus is on trial in front of Pontius Pilate. And so in that scene, Pilate is questioning Jesus. The, the Jewish leaders have brought Jesus to Pilate. They want him executed. The problem is they don't have the authority to do that. And so they bring him to Pilate, hoping they can convince Pilate that Jesus should be executed. And so Pilate is interrogating Jesus. And it's kind of an interesting thing, if you go home and you read the story um, in the Gospel of John, it, it, it almost begins to feel like Jesus is interrogating Pilate. You know? I mean, Pilate is sort of on the defensive. He's not, he's not, he's not getting the better of Jesus. But in the sequence in which we have before us, Jesus and Pilate talk about truth. 
the, the whole concept of truth, that Jesus says, you know, I came to bear witness to the truth. And then if you go home and open up your Bibles and take a look at this story, the very next phrase, the very next verse is Pontius Pilate saying, what is truth? What is truth? I mean, we think about truth as, you know, a true statement versus a false statement. Or, I mean, I'm going to tell you the truth, you know, and parents ever do that to me? You know, tell me the truth, Allison. Tell me the truth now. Did you really eat that cookie or not? You know, what is the truth? Tell me the truth. But in the Gospel of John, truth is a little different. Truth is not a statement or a statement of fact. Truth is life. That is to say, when you have the truth, you have an understanding of life, the fullness of life, the abundance of life. And your truth is not a statement or a fact. Truth is what God brings. God brings truth, and God brings truth to us through the person of Jesus. That's why earlier in the gospel, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because the only truth that there is is the fullness and abundance of life. Nothing else matters. I mean, we've got all sorts of things in our world that, that, that think they matter, or all sorts of things that we think matter, but in the end, the only thing that really matters is the fullness and the abundance of life. And that life comes through the crucified and risen Jesus who brings us, who reveals to us the truth of God's work in our world, how God is at work in the midst of a very mixed up, messed up, broken world in order to bring one thing, to bring life. And so Jesus is the bearer of that truth, which brings this incredible irony to bear. I mean, here's Pilate, Right? Looking Jesus right in the eye and saying, in the verse that comes after today's reading, what is truth? You know, it's like you were saying, yeah, hello, Pilate, duh, duh. You're looking right at it. It's right there in front of you. And he misses it. Which is also sometimes our experience, too. Sometimes we, too, look truth right in the eye. And we miss it. We miss it because we become distracted by all those other things that claim to be givers of life. All those other things that claim to bring fullness and wonder and richness and abundance, but fail to deliver. I mean, why is it that you can go to Best Buy on Black Friday and there are people hauling out these big, huge, big screen TVs, you know? They have the big screen TVs. And as they're hauling it out, I'm thinking, well, gee, I mean, I bought mine six years ago. Mine's not nearly that good, is it? Because in about two or three years, the people who are hauling out those big screen TVs are going to have to go back to Best Buy and buy even bigger big screen TVs because these won't be good enough. You know? I mean, it, 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 the, the big screen TV doesn't deliver the fullness of life. Maybe for the Super Bowl, and that's about it because by then it's out of date. Or the new car. I mean, you see that? I mean, I've seen, I, I know there, I'm sure there are more. I've only just, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I've seen two just in the last couple of days, both Ford advertising their F-150s and um, Toyota advertising all their cars. Um, you know, buy a new car, you know, buy a new car and get, your life will be full and rich and wonderful uh, until, you know, the muffler goes out or something and, and you know, and then you're stuck. I mean, it, it's, or your battery needs to be replaced, right? You know, the, uh, we, we have all these things that, that distract us, that pull us aside. And we lose sight of Christ the King. The King who is different. Remember how we talked with the children? The King who doesn't demand of us. Who doesn't demand that we toe the line or else there will be lightning bolts today. The king who does not come and extract everything that he can out of us, which is what kings typically did. I mean, most kings throughout history have been on the tape. Instead, it's the king who not only is benevolent and generous, it's the king who is willing to sacrifice 
his life for his subjects, for you. There is the source of life. I mean, we, you know, we live, like I said before, we live, in, you know, we live in a very mixed up, crazy, messed up, broken down, vulnerable, hurting world. And what happens when Jesus is on that throne called the cross is Jesus takes all that stuff on him. Jesus bears all that stuff as he hangs on that cross, as he suffers death in order to restore, renew, rejuvenate, revive the world in which we live, to change us and to give us hope in the midst of our journey through a difficult, sometimes very difficult life. That's what Christ the King is about. That's what the abundance of life is about. That's what the truth is. And in Jesus, we have hope and life. So we celebrate Christ the King. We celebrate Christ the King as we, as we look ahead, as we give the look ahead down the, the path, as we say, oh, next week, Advent, you know, first Sunday of Advent. And we get into the stuff that is a part of Advent. Turn the tree, right, next Sunday. Turn the tree. Be here after 10.30 service. Turn the tree. We have a pizza this year? Yes. Okay, we weren't sure about that last time. Kind of looking at your email saying it's food. Is that include pizza? Last year was pizza. Those are the things we that those are the things that keep us up late at night. <laughs> you know, it's pizza. It's all about pizza, folks. Um, you know, and then as we begin our Advent services, as we begin that rhythm of worship, that, you know, the midweek services, hanging in the greens, the following week we'll have a drama, the following week after that we'll do some caroling in place. I mean, all sorts, all that's in the newsletter. All sorts of things that are part of that rhythm of the, the, the Advent slash Christmas season. But most importantly, most importantly, we journey. And we journey till we get to the, to the manger of Bethlehem. And when we get to the manger of Bethlehem, we take a look in that manger. And we see the child there. And we look into his eyes. And there, only in a little baby form, is the truth. There is God's work in the world. It's not just a cute little kid in a manger. It's God breaking into our world to begin that process. That will end up on the cross. That will end up bearing the weight of the world. That will end up giving life. Giving life abundantly. Giving life its fullness and its riches. Giving life. Not being diverted on the sidelines with stuff that cannot deliver. But being given life that overcomes all things. Even the power of death. Amen. We continue with the singing of hymn number 660 as you are comfortable as you please rise.
saved in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 217 in the front of the hymnal. Page 217. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. <coughs> saints of all ages in your infinite love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, that we commend to you this day, trusting in your abundant mercy, your Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
bread we break and the wine we pour come from you. As we eat and drink with thanksgiving, fill us with your love. Let that love flow through us to others. And join us to the saints before us in a holy and boundless communion. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please notice we partake in communion. We have both three wafers in addition to the regular wafers and grape juice in addition to the wine. If you have need of them, please just let us know and we will gladly share them with you. For those of you who are guests and visitors, please note the communion invitation in the bulletin. We do sincerely invite you to join with us. Hunger no more, thirst no more. Come to the banquet of life. Please be seated.
So you guys will be out there next weekend and the following weekend selling. If you want to take a look at the ornaments, they're on a little tree right outside on the table right across here. You can see what they look like. Um, but think about that. Think about the cookies. Come for the cookies next week. And then the bags that are going to go around, hopefully, to a lot of folks. Did I get everything right? Eric, Bruce, and Eric, Bruce, and Eric. Oh, she's in the accuracy this morning. Was that? Oh, what's that? Yeah, this will be in the newsletter, but we're, okay, this is, we got to come up with a better phrase. So we're going to buy the farm. You know, we're going to buy the farm, you bought the farm, you know that old phrase. Seriously, what we're looking for is a part of the world hunger emphasis is if the um, world hunger appeal estimates at 700, $715, so $715, $725 buys the stuff to provide for a farm in a, in a, in a third world country. So we're going to kind of throw that out, but if you don't want to buy chips or pigs or, or whatever through the good gifts thing, we're going to kind of gather the funds together to purchase a farm. And if we get a farm, maybe we get two, maybe we get two farms. Um, so that's another, that'll be in the newsletter, but kind of think about that as well as we go into the Christmas season. Uh, when we're spending lots of money on big screen TVs and, and all sorts of, you know, Cyber Monday deals, think about two people who have done that. So thank you. And thanks to uh, the Enders and the Gilberts for kind of being our spearhead on the world over stuff. You guys have made a big difference. Thank you. As you're comfortable, the closing hymn is 826. Please note we sing verses 1, 3, and 5.